everyone. Welcome to another video in my long-term liabilities lecture series. This video is all about redeeming bonds. Um, and when we say redeeming, we mean paying them off, paying off your debt. And so, um, you know, let's just dive right on into it. All right, here's our overview. I, I find the easiest way to talk about redeeming bonds is to basically go through a long example. And so I'm gonna give you this one slide of overview and then we're gonna just dive into an example. I'm gonna show you how it plays out and that's really all there's gonna to be to it. So let's check it out. Um, redemption is the process of paying off bond debt and reclaiming your certificate, right? That certificate that says, hey, I owe you money. You, you take that back, you pay them the money and everything's done. Um, when a bond is redeemed, and here are the key pieces that are gonna end up in our journal entries for recording this economic transaction of bond redemption is, we're gonna credit cash. Remember, we are the ones paying. That's why I have this funny little drawing over here for you. Um, it, kind of the, the person being shaken down for money. Um, we are paying when we redeem a bond, right? We, the company, are paying back whoever loaned us the money to begin with. And you may be thinking, well, of course we are. That's going to come back to visit us when we get to the last bullet. And I'll, I'll touch on that again in a minute. Bond payable. Because you're paying off that liability, you've got to get it off your books. And remember, bond payable is always on the books at face value. And so we're going to debit it for face value. And that'll make it go away. If at the time of redemption, there is any remaining premium or discount, it has to go away too. Think of this very similarly to fixed assets. When you sell a fixed asset, if there's accumulated depreciation that goes with that asset, it has to go away. You can't have accumulated depreciation on an asset you no longer have. Same thing with bonds. You can't have a premium or a discount on a bond that you don't actually have, right? On a bond payable. Um, and so uh, any remaining premium would be debited to make it go away. Any remaining discount would be credited to make it go away. And here's the tricky one. This is the one that students just just struggle with, I find, when it comes time for exams. Um, any difference between the cash paid and the book value becomes a gain or a loss. Now, the reason that this is, this is a struggle point is not because it's hard in concept. If there's a difference between the cash and there's a difference from your book value, then clearly there was a gain or a loss going on there. Where students struggle is by this point in the course, You've dealt with this before, but you've dealt with it in terms of selling fixed assets, where when you sell a fixed asset and you get rid of its accumulated depreciation, you get rid of its book value, if there is, if there is a difference between the cash you receive from selling it and the book value, that's a gain or a loss. What makes it different is, is in, with fixed assets, you're receiving money. And so you want cash to be higher than book value because that's a gain to you because you're getting the money. With bonds, you are paying the money. Again, remember the picture if it helps, right? You're paying the money. And so you want cash to be less than book value. That's a gain to you. And I know that sounds counterintuitive that if cash is less than book value, that's a gain. That doesn't sound right because that's just not what we're used to hearing but that is the, the, the fact of the matter here. Um, your liability has a certain worth to you. That's a worth of things you owe. If you can get rid of that liability by paying less than what the liability was worth, you have saved money. That is a gain, okay? And so just remember that. Um, uh, uh, gain is when cash is less than book value. Loss would be if cash is more than book value. This is the exact opposite of all those times we've dealt with selling off assets. So, so just keep that in mind. And then just a note down here, um, going back to this idea of cost of debt, um, companies definitely use some strategy when it comes to their, their long-term debt. Um, and basically they try to time uh, the payment of bonds to minimize the overall cost of debt. So they analyze, hey, could we pay off this bond and save some interest? Uh, oh wait, but what if we still need the money? Well, could we pay off this bond by issuing another bond? Has, has, has the market rate shifted enough to make it worth our time to actually issue more bonds to pay off existing bonds because there'll be a difference in rate, a difference in discount, a difference in premium. Companies play this game in order to try to minimize their, their cost of debt, and as they should. 
All right, that's it for the overview. I told you, we're just gonna go through an example of how this plays out because that's the, the best way to see this, is to see it in action. So um, here we have the, the kind of the easiest case. Um, on March 31st, Flyer Corps redeems $200,000 worth of bonds. So that's our face value, right? The bonds have already reached maturity. Remember, if a bond has reached maturity, it does not matter if it was originally issued at a premium, originally issued at a discount, originally issued at face value. By the time you hit maturity, the, the, any premium, any discount is gone. If you don't know why I'm saying that, check out my lecture on bond amortization where I kind of walk through that process and you see what happens, that premium or discount over time. But just know that at maturity, you don't have premiums to worry about. You don't have uh, uh, discounts to worry about. So your face value is your book value, all right? And here it says, um, prepare the journal entry for the redemption of bonds. Notice it doesn't say anything about cash. What, what about cash, right? Um, and so uh, the idea is once a bond matures and you have to pay it off, you pay face value. That's, that's how that works. And so uh, our journal entry, March 31st, would simply be uh, get rid of the bond payable, 200000 pay the cash, 200000 and we are done. Now, I do have to put an asterisk on that of, of being done because note here that I put in parentheses, ignore the final interest payment. Um, and I'm doing that just for simplicity, at, you know, so we can focus on the redemption piece, not the interest piece. But it, going back to when I first told you about issuance and I, and I showed you time value of money and how bonds are a series of cash flows, remember the final interest payment on a bond usually comes at the time of maturity. So normally, yes, you would have this. This is not wrong, but you would also have an interest payment going with it. And and so just so we can focus on this and not on the interest, I'm telling you, ignore that in final interest payment, whatever it would happen to be if given the details to calculate it. All right, now let's jump into a premium situation. So that was just a bond at maturity, which it doesn't matter if you were faced premium discount. Now let's talk specifically premium. Um, March 31st, Flyer Corps redeems $200,000 worth of bonds at 99. Something I wanna point out here, because this is another pain point I find for students, is they get so used to seeing at a number, right? That's the quote on the bond. Um, they initially, like, like just, just instinctually, what happens is you think, oh, it was a $200,000 bond, and at 99 means that bond must have had a discount. But that's not true. You're redeeming it at 99. It has nothing to do with what you issued it as. This bond could be a premium, this bond could be a discount, this bond could be face value. Up till this point in the problem, there's nothing to tell us one way or another. We are simply redeeming at 99. That's not what we issued at, so make sure you keep those clear. It says the bonds have a book value of 202500 All right, there's our giveaway of whether this bond has a premium discount or is that face value. The book value is higher than the face value. Okay, so here's face value. Here's book value. It's higher specifically by 2500 implying that we have a 2500 premium on this bond. So this thing was not issued at 99. It was issued at something above 100, right? But we weren't told that. We can just get that implication. Um, prepare the journal entry for the redemption of the bonds. Okay, let's check it out. So March 31st again. Once again, we are paying off that bond payable. So debit bond payable. Remember, bond payable is always at book value. I mean, whoa, scratch that. At face value. Just slip my own tongue there. Um, $200,000. All right. Because we get rid of the bond, we also have to get rid of the premium that goes with it. Now, premiums, if it, if it just helps to think of it this way, because, because uh, you know, I find sometimes you just kind of forget, well, which side is the premium supposed to be on? Premiums pretty much always stay with the bond. And discounts, always go opposite the bond. That's a good way to think of it. Because like when you issue a bond payable at a premium, both the bond payable and the premium get credited. If you had a discount bond 
payable gets credited, but discount gets debited, right? So, so premium is almost always on the same side as the bond. In fact, it may always be on the same side. I was just always hesitate to say those kind of absolute terms because there's usually exceptions to everything, right? Um, but premium goes on the same side as the bond. So to get rid of it, we need to debit it as well for 2,500. Of course, the reason we're getting rid of this debt is because we're paying it off. So we've got our credit to cash. Now, how much? Well, it didn't explicitly tell us, but it gave us the info to calculate it. We've got a $200,000 bond getting redeemed at 99, or in other words, at 99% of its face value. So you treat it just like you would treat the quote on the issuance side. Um, on the issuance side, the, the quote is a percent of face value is the cash received. Well, on the redemption side, the quote is the percent of face value is the, per is the cash paid. And so um, let's see, if we have 99% uh, of 200,000, I believe that is going to be uh, 198,000 dollars. We're just going to double check that because uh, I don't for some reason that's not ringing right with me, but I feel like it is right. It is right. And so that's the cash paid. And now if you stop and look at this journal entry, you will see that the journal entry is of course out of balance. You have 202,500 on the debit side, you have 198 on the credit side. But what you know is that you had a debt of 202,500. That was the book value of your debt. And you were able to get rid of it by only paying 198,000 cash paid. And so you saved 500, uh, 12, 4, 40, it looks like $4,500 um, is what you end up saving by redeeming this bond or what we call a gain. And so we're also going to have over here gain on redemption. That's kind of how we word it for $4,500. And of course, now if we add up, we've got our 202 500 over here and we've got our 202 500 on the credit side our journal entry is in balance and we've done everything we needed to do get rid of the bond get rid of the premium pay the cash record again for the difference between cash and book value all right let's check it out with a discount so here we go um march 31st again this time Flyer Corps redeems the $200,000 worth of bonds at 101. Again, don't make the common mistake, right? At 101 here doesn't mean these bonds were issued at a premium. At 101 simply means we're paying 101% of face value to redeem them. Um, the bonds have a book value of 197,000. All right, that right there tells you that one, this thing was issued at a discount because book value is lower than face value. So we're definitely at a discount, but even more important, it tells you that we've got a $3,000 discount at the time of redemption. Remember, that wasn't necessarily the original discount, right? Because discounts and premiums go down over time. So the original discount was probably higher, but this is the discount that's, that is there at the time of, of redemption. Um, and so the journal entry for redemption, we're getting rid of the bond payable, face value, we have to get rid of the discount. Remember, discount's always going to be on the opposite side from the bond payable. So um, discount on BP, which we just figured out was $3,000. we are paying cash. How much cash? Well, $200,000 times 1.01, .01, right? Greater than, than, than 100%. And uh, that should come out to $202,000 in cash. Now, again, check it out over here. We're at 205 on the credit side. We're only at 200 on the debit side. So we are missing a debit of 5,000. Um, and you could actually just plug it right then and there. You know you need a debit of 5,000. If you're debiting the missing thing, that must be a loss. But if we wanna think about it conceptually, um, we know that we have a debt that is to us worth 197. That's its book value. And we know that we are paying to get rid of it 202,000 cash paid, 
which means we have a $5,000 loss. We overpaid to get rid of the bond, okay? And so I'm gonna go ahead and move this down, create my loss on, and I'm just gonna say red, redemption, 5,000. And now that puts our journal entry in balance. Okay. Now, a question I often get from students at this point is, why would a company do this? Like, think about it. Um, you could just ride the bond out, right? You could ride it out to maturity and simply pay back 200000 and that's it. Why would you pay more early and incur a loss on it? Which, think about it, that loss is going to go on the income statement. It's going to lower your net income. It seems counterintuitive for a company to do this. But here's the deal. Remember, the company might be incurring a loss on this particular transaction, so it, it looks bad, right? However, what if, in this case, um, what if the annual interest rate on this bond was, uh, uh, I don't know, let's say 5%. Or let's even make it smaller. Let's say the annual interest rate is 2%. That's it. Um, that means you're gonna be paying $4,000 per year in interest, um, which implies that, you see this loss of 5,000? Well, if you have more than like a year and a half left on this bond um, in interest payments, this loss here is actually lower than the cost you're gonna incur from all the remaining interest payments. Um, and so that's the idea. Sure, it looks bad that you're taking a loss, but if that loss avoids a greater amount of future cost in terms of interest, then that loss is worth it to do that now. Um, and, and so this is just kind of the, the math that companies go through and the decisions that they have to make when it comes to their debt. And that's it, I told you, redemption is just, you know, it's best shown in kind of a series of examples. And, and there's no real tricks to it. If you just follow the rules I laid out, get rid of the bond, get rid of any premium or discount that goes with it show the cash outflow, and at that point, any difference is a gain or a loss, and you just have to remember that because you are spending cash, you actually want the cash to be lower than book value. That's what leads to a gain. Um, that's it for the redemption of bonds, and honestly, that's it for bonds, and, and really, that's it for long-term liabilities. Now, there is another video in this lecture series. Why is that? Well, Liabilities only has two balance sheet classifications, current liabilities, long-term liabilities, and we just finished talking about the latter, which means it's time to do some financial statement analysis on our liabilities. And so that's the remaining video. Um, we're done with bonds, but we do have to talk about just liabilities in general and how to analyze them. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you join me for that video, and I hope you have a great day.